Nature can be incredibly inspiring, whether it's the flowers in your back garden, or the crashing waves and the sound of seagulls at the beach. I find myself returning regularly to the sound of nature, especially birds. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use birdsong to inspire an abstract art project. What you want to do is head out into nature, if you can, or your garden, or, or you could listen to some nature sounds on YouTube, and you want to start representing different bird sounds with different shapes. So I can hear some wood pigeons. For me, that's going to be their shape. And it usually comes in threes, so I'm going to do three of them together. As you listen to the sounds, you might start hearing patterns. There might be birds that make sharp sounds with three of them repeated. You might start thinking about laying, layering things, layering the sounds one on top of the other. Some of the little birds, they make sort of more small sort of closely gathered together sounds, which I like to represent with little dots. You might have your own way of representing that, the little bird sounds. But as you go through, and if you do this repeatedly over a few days in the same spot, you start to recognize different bird sounds and know that you're going to represent them with a certain pattern. And so when you look at your picture, you can almost hear which birds are making what sounds. Try to use different mediums as you go out into nature or stay at home and sketch these bird songs. You could try charcoal on paper, inks, here yeah, I'm using inks. Uh, brush pens are great for getting a variety of marks on the paper. And try to be free and not judgmental of yourself because this is the way that you can explore new shapes, new patterns, new representations that you've never done before. But the only way to explore that is to give yourself the freedom to try completely new things. These angle brushes are lovely for getting a variety of shapes. And the inks that I love using are these waterproof inks because you can work over them in watercolour or brush them over other things, other pens. And they have a sort of soft sheen to them when they dry, which is really exciting, I find. It's like they behave like watercolour. 
but dry a little bit like acrylics. You can also think about, as you lay the, lay the patterns on the page, you can think about the pitch of the sounds of the birds you're hearing. So you can, like a graphic score would, you can have the higher pitched sounds of the birds at the top and the lower pitched sound birds at the bottom. You can make larger patterns for the noisier birds and smaller patterns for the quieter birds. These are all typical things that are used on a graphic score and yet you don't have to stick to the rules if you don't want to. That's just a suggestion if you felt like it. I like to have the five lines of the staves wandering through the bird song. Sometimes some of the lines of the stave are lost, but you can see here, I've got those five lines of the musical stave there, and it puts in some movement back into the artwork. Sometimes I use the lines of the stave to show the flight of the birds. If, like me, you love using the inks on paper, have a go at creating some larger sketches with them. Once you've decided on your representations of the bird calls, the next stage is to think about the background of your artwork, graphic score and this is where the fun can begin because you can choose different mediums depending on how you feel so you could do the background using watercolour wash or you could have a go at acrylics I'm today decided to use acrylics um, and you want to kind of start off by just applying various bits of the colour uh, to different sections which you will later mix in um, and blend so that you have sort of areas of colour almost like if you can imagine a photo of different blossom trees around and you're kind of just capturing that those areas of colour so I'm going to go ahead now and work quite quickly um, just working these areas of colour in um, and it's quite nice when they kind of blend into one another and turn into slightly different colours as you go along. So, you know, I've got this sort of red turning into salmon. So, you can sort of do anything you want, but this is what I enjoy doing. So I'm going to carry on doing that for a little bit until the whole thing is filled with sort of few blues, greens, salmons and reds and yellows. Because you're going to layer on top of this your bird song patterns, you want the base layer that you're doing now to be fairly smooth. So if you did choose to use a sponge, you probably do need to use a dry brush to smooth it over so that your bird song can stand out. Once you have done your background, it's then time to start putting on your bird sound patterns. If you're working in watercolour, this is quite straightforward because you've done your background in watercolour and you can then use pen and ink. So like just normal ink pens that you buy from the stationery shop. You could use charcoal, graphite, um, cut 
pieces of paper even, um, or inks like I showed you earlier. If you're working in acrylics like I am, inks work really well, waterproof inks work lovely over it, or you could do the patterns in acrylics on top. Um, but I'll show you what I love to do, which is working in these lovely waterproof inks. It helps to have your sketches of all the different bird sounds that you've created over the past few sessions when you've gone out into nature. It helps to have them with you when you get to this stage so that you can recall the type of things that you want to put down. And remember the sort of birds that you want to feature in your piece of artwork. The other thing that's quite nice is early in the video I talked about putting musical staves, the five lines of the musical stave um, around, sort of swishing around the piece. And I've painted the background with these kind of swishes, so that will help me to guide the movement of the piece. Um, and I may then add musical staves using these, you know, movement lines. When you're really immersed in this project, it's interesting because when you draw certain shapes, it's almost like you can hear them. Uh, so I can hear this particular bird and it's sort of swishing, chirping sound. Because for me, that's, this shape represents that sound, so in my head, the shape looks like the sound. And I guess this would be personal and different for everybody who does this project. So no two pieces will come out the same.
as you can see, the piece is developing. I am building up the first sets of bird song. If I'm going to layer anything, that will come later. But you can see that I'm sort of using size to represent level of noise. So it's kind of like musical dynamics. The really loud birds that are nearby to me are much larger. But the ones that are, you know, perhaps all gathered in a bush, making a lot of noise together, and are not as noisy or loud, are kind of smaller. The sweeping movements, um, I often go out at dusk to, to draw birdsong and that's when you often get huge flocks of birds swooping around and preparing themselves for roosting and so I've got some of those sweeping movements here as well using the flow of the paint, background paint and kind of doing the patterns on top following those curves. I thought it would be interesting to show you a few examples of watercolours and inks on paper, acrylic ink on paper, pen and acrylic ink on paper, and finally the most interesting one, vegetable inks like beetroot and berry ink on paper. I'm working in the black ink now, focusing on those five lines of the musical stave. I hope you've loved this tutorial and found something really inspiring or useful. Please hit the thumbs up button and like and subscribe. Your support is greatly appreciated. Earlier I mentioned using plant-based inks. It's really quite exciting to try them out with this project. I've done some tutorials which you can check out, making ink out of avocado pits and also out of berries. Working those inks into handmade papers is very, very exciting and I'd recommend trying it. Do check out my other artwork at Nash Henkel Art on Instagram and Facebook. And good luck with all your making projects. If you do something exciting, do let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you.